to Unyus Mission Eswatini Easter service. Today, I'm going to preach about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ it is a package of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So through understanding this death of Jesus Christ, I hope you can understand the clear meaning of the gospel and you can receive and have a faith in the true gospel of Christ. First of all, we will read Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28. Through this story, this is the day when Jesus was caught by the uh, Roman soldier. So, uh, before Jesus was caught, he had a last supper with his disciple so let us first read matthew chapter 26 verse 26 and as they were eating jesus took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciple and said take it this is my body then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Yes, I read this, what Jesus had done during the Last Supper on the day of the starting of the Passover. When Jesus, on the day, on the night when Jesus was caught, he started with the Passover feast. Everyone, do you know Passover? Passover started in the Old Testament from the time Jew, uh, Israelites came out of the Egypt. So at the time Israel people came out of the Egypt, God first gave them a feast of Passover. So as a one of the uh, major feasts, Israel people even keeping uh, until nowadays. Then why this Passover is very important feast for the Israel people? The day of this Passover was the night just before these children of Israel come out of Egypt. This Egypt where they were belongs to that represents sin, this world and Satan. So when Israel people were confined it and ruled by this Egypt, they didn't have that power to overcome this power by themselves. It is just like us. We were born as a sinner under the power of Satan. We were born as a nature of sin, seed of sin. Since we were born under the Satan's power, no matter how hard we try, try not to sin, try to do the will of God, try to please God through changing our behavior, we are not able to come out from the power and authority of Satan by ourselves, by our own strength and power. Just like these Israel people, they were controlled by Egyptian. No matter how hard they try, they had no power to come out. Likewise, these people who were born under the sin do not have power to come out from this power of Satan. But at that night, God commanded the children of Israel to keep this feast of Passover. During the feast of Passover, what do they do? From the month of seventh, actually God commanded this month of seven become a month of the starting of a year. So this month is now called Nisan, a month of Nisan. Nisan means it's a starting and the new beginning. So the date before they lived means before they come out of Egypt, where, while they were living in the Egypt, the date was the seventh month and 
14th day. But from this day, God commanded the children of Israel to change the month. This month, seventh month, now become a new beginning month of a year. So God gave a new calendar for the children of Israel to change this seventh month into a first month as a starting month of a year. So it started to be called as a month of Nisan. So this Nisan became a first month on the uh, Jewish calendar to count as the first month of a year. So this first month and 14th day was the date these Israel people has to keep a, a lamb which has no blemish. On the night after sunset, they are supposed to slaughter this lamb and the most important thing during this Passover, they had to paint this blood on the doorpost and lintel. So God promised, I will destroy and kill all the firstborn of an animal and firstborn of a son in the house of Egypt. But if you really want to avoid this uh, judgment, all the children of Israel must paint their doorpost and lintel with the blood of the sacrifice of this land. So when I see the blood, God promised I will pass by, pass over this judgment. Otherwise, all the house of Egypt, their firstborn of an animal and firstborn of a son must be destroyed. Because this firstborn represents the representative of a whole family. So instead of killing everyone, God decided to kill the firstborn as a representative. So now God commanded, uh, furthermore, after painting the blood of the sacrifice of a lamb, now roast the flesh of a lamb and eat that flesh with unleavened bread and with a bitter herb. So when they eat all these three things, roasted meat and unleavened bread and the bitter herb, I will pass over this judgment in the house of Israel. So the angels of God come to destroy and kill the firstborn. But while you have painted the blood and eating the meat, roasted meat with uneven bread and bitter herb, you can be secure, you can avoid that judgment. So these children of Israel, no matter how hard they try to come out from the hands of this Egypt, they didn't, uh, they didn't find any meat. They didn't look for any kind of way to uh, exit this Egypt. But while they are keeping this Passover, God allowed them to find a way to come out from Egypt, which means coming out from this power of Satan, released by this sinful, deceitful, uh, the nature of sin. So how can we overcome this Satan? How can we break through this desire of sin and come out from the judgment of God? We don't have any power to do to find our own way of to receive salvation. But God, as God gave Passover to the children of Israel, if we also understand the spiritual meaning of Passover, we will be able to conquer this sin, conquer Satan, and conquer this world. Amen. Then what is the spiritual meaning of this Passover? First, God gave this Lamb of God as a sacrifice. Lamb of God, this, is, this represents 
Yes, Jesus Christ. If you read John chapter 1 verse 29, John the Baptist, after he baptized Jesus, he saw Jesus coming the next day. And G John the Baptist did not introduce Jesus as a son of God or uh, some, as a someone else. John the Baptist described Jesus as a Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In this means, Jesus Christ came as a sacrifice of all our sin. So he came to the earth to pay the, the wage of our sin on the cross through his sacrifice for us to be relieved and for us to be washed and cleansed. So this Lamb of a sacrifice. So the blood of the sacrifice. These all things represent the blood of Jesus Christ. And what does this roasted meat represent? This body of Jesus Christ had to be tortured on the cross. He has to endure all this suffering and chastisement and bruised on the cross to take away our sin, to cleanse all of our sin. So the body of Jesus Christ who received all that suffering represents this roasted meat of a lamb. So when they eat the meat, this is the same meaning of the eating the body of Jesus Christ. And this unleavened bread, what does this unleavened bread mean? Yes, this unleavened bread represents innocent Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ described himself sharing his body, sharing his body as a bread of life. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciple and said, Take it. This is my body. Here, when Jesus gave this bread, he was saying, this is my body. This related to the unleavened bread which they ate on the Passover. Amen. And here, Matthew chapter 26, verse 27, Jesus offered a cup of wine. What is this cup of wine? Verse 27 says, Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Verse 28, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. As he shared this wine on the last supper, he says, This is my blood. This is the blood of a sacrifice, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. What can wash away our sin? What only has power to remiss and to take away, to wash, to cover all of our sin? That is nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. So on the day of Passover, when you paint this blood of a sacrifice on the doorpost and lintel and eat the roasted meat with unleavened bread represents the body of Jesus Christ, you will definitely conquer this power of Egypt, power of Pharaoh, and you will be able to come out from this strong power of Egyptian. Otherwise, these Israel people, no matter how hard they try, they couldn't find any way to come out of Egypt. But while you are eating this unleavened bread, while you are painting this blood of a sacrifice on the doorpost, when you are keeping this Passover, you will have a power to defeat this giant, this gorgeous, this powerful Egypt. Likewise, as Jesus shared his bread, 
and His blood represents body of Jesus Christ and represents the blood of Jesus Christ. The reason why Jesus had the last supper with His disciple to show and signify this is my body and this is the wine, the blood of Jesus shedding on the cross. So when we are keeping this Passover, it represents the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will have which power? Yes, as a human who were born in sin, nature of sin, under the authority of Satan, you will have that great power to defeat and to break through all this power of Satan. Through believing in Jesus Christ, through receiving this bread and wine represent body of Jesus Christ and shedding of blood of Jesus Christ, through the sacrifice of Jesus, you will be able to conquer this sin and defeat the desire of sin and get the remission of sin. You can live now free life and live victorious life. This is only the power that we can possess through the body and blood of Jesus. So Jesus also was keeping this Passover night with his disciples sitting down and sharing his bread and sharing the wine. On the same day, on the same date, just like children of Israel was keeping the Passover on the 14th of the month of Nisan, Jesus was also keeping the Passover night on the 14th of a month of Nisan. Isn't it amazing? It is the same date. Yes. So on that same night, Jesus was caught because his body must be crucified on the cross as a sacrifice of a lamb of God. So no long, his body is no longer his. He has to be committed into the hands of the Romans and crucified on the cross so that he can fulfill the will of God. God can accomplish his promise, his will, his covenant through Jesus Christ. Through that death of Jesus Christ, all of our sin, all of our iniquity, all of our transgressions can be covered, cleansed, and perfectly taken away. This is an amazing story through Passover and through Jesus keeping the Passover, having a last supper with his disciple, Jesus signified that my body, my blood will sanctify you, will justify you. You will be free from Satan. You will no longer kept by under the authority and power of Satan. Now you are free. You are now you are conqueror. This is what Jesus wanted to speak to the disciple of Jesus and even to us for us to remember the day of the capture of Jesus Christ. So this was the day of the capturing of Jesus Christ. And after that, when Jesus was caught by the Roman soldier, he was accused by the high priest and Jews at the night. And these Jews, they took Jesus Christ to the Pilate. On the following day, on the month date of 15th, according to our time concept, we count a day on the midnight. So midnight becomes a day start. But according to the Jews' time, sunset start a day. So as I mentioned, on the date of the 14th sunset, they are supposed to keep this Passover. On the same date of 14th of the month of Nisan, the first month, 
Jesus kept also Passover, sharing bread and wine with his disciples. But according to the Jews' time, they start a day. They consider this sunset as a day starting. So on that same day, now it becomes a 15th date. So on the day of the 15th, Jesus stood before the Pilate. Pilate wanted to save Jesus Christ, but because of these Jews and high priests, they wanted to crucify Jesus. Pilate, he washed his hands and he handed over Jesus Christ to the hands of uh, these Jews. Jesus was crucified at 9 a.m. and he was tortured and crucified and transfigured, suffered and shed all the blood, receiving that suffering extremely at the cross and he lastly passed away at 3 p.m. After he finished, after he passed away, now people took his dead corpse and buried in the tomb of Jesus. But what we have to remember one thing, before Jesus Christ crucified and before he died on the cross, he said the last one word. It is finished. After saying it is finished, he passed away and he was now buried in a tomb. What does this mean, it is finished? Jesus Christ, he knew what is his mission. What is the will of God sending him and crucifying him on the cross? So he exactly knew what he is supposed to do. What is that? Through his sacrifice, all of our sins can be washed and cleansed so that we can be sanctified, justified. That is only one way that we can defeat the power of Satan. We can come out from this sinful, deceitful nature of, of sin. So Jesus now, through his cruc crucifixion, he now understands, he now confirmed that all the sin of this world, all the sin of you human are taken away, shed through the shedding of my blood, through my sacrifice, you are all forgiven. So Jesus said, I have finished and completed all the mission through my death. It is finished. With that last word, he passed away. So on the night that he was buried in the tomb, now the day of Sabbath start. The day of Sabbath start from the seventh day sunset until the next day sunset. Jesus gave this the, the rules of keeping the day of Sabbath as a commandment to the children of Israel. It is because God created the whole world within six days and after God completed everything, He took a rest from the seventh day. Which means God finished all the creation of this world within six days and He has no more things to do. He has no more, to, no more things to fix or add or omit. So he completely finished all his works perfectly. This is why Jesus can take a rest from the seventh day. He entered into the Sabbath. God wanted to give us this memory. I have rested from the day of seventh. Which means I have completed everything. I have accomplished all my plan, all my will. So when Jesus died on the cross, on the sunset of that night, 
we are supposed to enter into the true Sabbath. Everyone, what does this true Sabbath mean? Is that the Sabbath that we have to keep as a rule, as a day of serving and worshiping God? Many people misunderstand about the Sabbath. If you do not understand the spiritual meaning of giving us Sabbath, you have no choice but to be tied down under the Sabbath. Sabbath is not the day that you have to not to do anything. Yes, physically, according to the commandment of God, that is the law that you have to follow. But what is the spiritual meaning of that? God wanted to give His heart to us. God wanted to speak to us. Everyone, I have accomplished all my will, all my plan. I have nothing anymore. I have nothing more to do. So I am taking a rest. Likewise, Jesus, through His crucifixion, through His sacrifice, through His death, we have nothing to do for our own sin, but also of our life. Jesus Christ, He became our perfect Savior. If He became our Savior, is there anything for us to do? For example, if the parents are capable enough to pay the school fee and to take care of the children, to buy everything what they need, and mentally and physically, they are able to lead and take care of the children, then children can only just rely on their parents and receive all the love and grace from their parents. While the parents busy working, preparing their uh, children's school fees, school uniforms, food, and everything, children, what do they do? Yes, what all they have to do is just study, and relaxing and playing around at home that is only the children can do while their parents are busy working for them if Jesus becomes our perfect parents if Jesus became our perfect Savior what are we supposed to do for our sin what are we supposed to do for our life we have nothing to do but only relying on the works of Jesus. This is how Jesus came to the earth as a perfect Savior. Hallelujah! This is the name of Jesus. This is the meaning of Yeshua. He came as a Savior to save all of us humans from our sin. So Jesus, He is busy taking care of everything for our sin, even for our future, for all of our life. When He died on the cross, shed all the blood, finished all our sin, and redeemed us from the power of Satan, from the hands of Satan, from the authority of Satan, we are no more under the power of Satan. Hallelujah! Yes, now Jesus paid all the wages of our sin. Jesus received all the suffering. Jesus received all the judgment on our behalf because of our sin, he has nothing more to do. He entered into the rest. So now we are entering into the true Sabbath. When these Jews accused the, the disciple of Jesus, why your disciple do not keep the Sabbath as holy day? Why are they taking the wheat and eating that? They are not supposed to do anything. So at that time, what Jesus said, I am the master of the Sabbath. Yes, Jesus is not the one who is binding us or confining us under the commandment of this Sabbath. Jesus came to the earth as a true master of Sabbath to give us true spiritual Sabbath in our life. Whosoever believes in Jesus, you have nothing to do. You can only take a rest in the bosom, in the works of Jesus. Amen. So let us read one verse 
Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden I and I will give you rest Jesus is calling all the human who are heavy laden if you are the one who is laboring and if you are the one who is carrying heavy laden now come unto me and give all your burden unto me give all your sin unto me give all your disease unto me i will be bruised on the cross i will be suffering on the cross i will receive all the judgment on your behalf and makes you free, makes you heal, makes you completely uh, live victorious and conqueror's life. So Jesus is giving us this true Sabbath. Just like in the Old Testament, God gave a law and commandment to the children of Israel. On the sunset of the seventh day, all your yourself, your daughter, your son, your people, and even visitors who is coming into your house must stop doing any activities and work on the sun from the time of sunset of the seventh day. What does that mean? If you come into Jesus, if you come into the faith of Jesus. If you believe through the death of Jesus Christ, crucifixion of Jesus Christ, all of your sins are forgiven and completely finished and done everything by the works of Jesus, you have to take off everything. You have to enter into the true peace in Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus has done everything perfect for us. Jesus, He accomplished everything for us. He completed everything for us that is why jesus is calling us to join into the true sabbath of our spiritual life so now we are entering into this sabbath eternal sabbath started whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life ever since you believe in jesus christ if you are still busy working, trying to do something, then you are not a true believer. You are not a true person who have faith in the death of Jesus Christ. If you entered into the true Sabbath, you are not supposed to carry any burden, any yoke, any problem, any difficulties on your shoulder. Then whatever problem comes, you have to toss to Jesus. Jesus, you are supposed to carry all these things. You are supposed to solve all this problem. Jesus, I am sick. Jesus, I have this problem. Jesus, I have this burden. Jesus, I have this yoke. Then I hope you can toss everything onto Jesus. Then do you know what Jesus will say? Hey, I have accomplished everything for you at the cross. Your sin are forgiven. Your problem are solved at the cross, your disease, sickness, everything is now done. What you have to do? Just believe. Believe my power. Believe my blood. Believe my body. Through believing it, that through my death, you are sanctified, justified, you are healed, and you are taking care of all the problems of your life. Through that faith, now you can enter into the true Sabbath. Amen. Yes, this is the true meaning of Sabbath. Jesus is not giving us the Sabbath for us to keep and follow and bounded under the commandment. We are no more under the commandment. Now we are entering into the guidance of the Holy Spirit, law of spirit of the life. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, last, lastly, let me share about the story of the resurrection. After finishing this the Sabbath day on the 16th of the first month, now 
it, after sunset, it becomes the 17th day of the first month of Nisan. So on the first 17th of the first month, this is the day of resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus resurrected from the dead. What does that mean? Jesus entered into the dead to pay the wage of our sin. The wages of our sin is dead. It is written in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. So Jesus died on the cross to pay the wages of our sin. So he had no choice but to be kept under the dead for the period of three days, paying all the wages of our sin. So after he complete, completed paying the wages of our sin, buried under the dead, overwhelmed by, overwhelmed by the power of the dead, and kept under the dead, if he finished all the payment for our sin, does he any longer to stay under the dead? For example, a certain criminal or a certain sinner sentenced to two years in prison. If this convicted criminal entered into the prison and spent two years, after spending two years, does he any longer need to stay one day more or two days more in the prison? No. He, don't, he doesn't deserve or she doesn't deserve to stay any more days than that he was sentenced. If his sentence was two years, after exactly two years, he is supposed to be released. Right? What does that mean? He has completed paying all the wages of sin, staying in prison two years. Likewise, Jesus after paying all the wages of our sin, buried and kept under the dead for three days, no longer he has remained to suffer or to kept under the dead. It means he has paid all the wages of our sin through his death. Through his burial, now he completely finished and paid all the wages of our sin. So he came out from the prison of death. He came out and finished all the judgment for our sin. What does that mean? There is no more charge on our sin to be paid. Jesus, he completely and perfectly finished all the charge and the wages of our sin through his death. So let me read Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. When he was buried, when he was dead, he was dead because of our offense. But now, the reason why he came out from the dead and his resurrection to justify us, to because of our justification, to claim and uh, to witness our justification. If we stand before God, we will be standing before the judgment of God. Then the angels of God will give all the records of our sin to God. Then ourselves will also confess all the sins that we have committed with our own tongue. Then everyone, can you imagine how shame, how guilty you may feel if you stand before God? At that time, if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, and if you truly believe the death of Jesus Christ finished all the wage of our sin, you will call the name of Jesus. Jesus, please come and witness your hands in front of God. Yes, I am a such evil, deceitful, sinful, pathetic human being. But for someone like me, 
For such deceitful, dirty person, for me, Jesus crucified on the cross. Please, Jesus, show me your hands. If Jesus was not resurrected, still buried under the dead, we cannot have any witness. But Jesus resurrected. Now he is sitting on the right hand of God as a witness for, for us. So he is sitting there smiling. And whosoever believe, Jesus, please show me your hands. Please show me your side. Please become my witness in front of God. God, you see, Jesus, His hand, His side, this is a witnessing. All my sins are covered and paid at the cross. And He is resurrected, which means He finished all the price and all the wages of my sin through the death of His life. So now He resurrected to justify my justification. Hallelujah. Yes, if you believe in Jesus, Jesus will witness his hand. He decides to show, yes, God, that is true. Uh, he, this man is very sinful, deceitful human. That is why I have to suffer at the cross. I have to be buried under the death for three days. After then, I completely finished all the payment for them. And now I am resurrected. I conquered all this sin, all this payment. I have received full perfect payment for this person. Then what God will say? Ah, oh, you are my beloved child. Come into the holy kingdom of God. You are sanctified one. You are justified one. Because you believe the death of Jesus Christ made you holy, righteous. You are more than enough to come into my kingdom. This is the meaning of resurrection. Jesus resurrected on the yes, 17th day of a month of Nisan. This date also gives us a tremendous meaning. Everyone, let's think about Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark stayed and mount stayed on the Mount of Ararat on the 17th day of 7th month. If you check Genesis chapter 7, we can witness that. So why God made this Noah's Ark sit on the Mount Ararat on the 17th day of 7th month? As I mentioned, this 7th month changed into the month of the Nisan, uh, first and starting month from the time of uh, Exodus, from the time of Israel people come out of Egypt. Then, which means the, the date of the, the, the Noah's Ark stayed on the Mount Ararat, and the date of the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a same month and same date. Why God gave us and showed us this spiritual meaning and spiritual date on the 17th of the first month? As we remember the, the Noah's Ark, Ark represents Jesus Christ, right? All the Israel people were judged by God because of their sin and iniquity. But only Noah and Noah's family could be saved through believing in God, entering into the Noah's Ark. This Ark represents Jesus Christ. But this Ark sat on the Mount Ararat. In Hebrew words, Ararat means, Ara means cursed, judgment. So if we live as ourselves. If we live without Jesus, we are supposed to be judged like all the people who were cursed out of the ark. Whether they were smart, intelligent, rich, foolish, uneducated, 
they would must be all killed and judged if they were out of the ark. So they all received the judgment. But this ark only stayed on the Mount Ararat. So Ara means cursed and judgment. But Rat is meaning of flipping over, turning upside down. So Ara Rat means cursed changed into blessing. Judgment in changed into the grace. Hallelujah. Yes, so while we are sitting and while we are entered into the ark of Noah, in other words, while we are believing in this death of Jesus Christ to save all of our sin, now we can enter into the Ara Rat, which means the cursed judgment which is all supposed to come unto us changed into blessing. There is no more curse, there is no more judgment for us. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, whatever mistake you may do, through Jesus Christ, all of our iniquity, all of our sin are forgiven and had already been paid through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So this Ararat, this uh, <clears throat> Noah's Ark stayed on the Ararat on the same date when Jesus resurrected from the dead. Isn't it so amazing? Yes, on the date of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, everything changed. All the judgment changed into grace. All the curse changed into blessing. All the sickness changed into health. All the troubles changed into, yes, blessed situation. If you enter into this Jesus Christ, if you enter into this salvation of Jesus, if you enter into this resurrection of Jesus Christ, from the day of you are entering in, on the date of the 17th of the month of first month, everything turned upside down. We were born as a sinner. We had no choice but to suffer forever on the eternal damnation, eternal hell. But we had no choice but to go to hell. Now we have no reason to go to hell. Why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because of the death of Jesus Christ. On the date of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we were moved from hell, eternal hell, to eternal heaven. Yes, if you are sick, are you suffering from financial difficulty? Are you suffering from any challenge in your life? then please remember your sickness changed into health. Your problem changed into blessing. Your uh, difficulty changed into the grace and power of God. If you are in the resurrection of Jesus, if you have faith in the resurrection of Jesus, if you have this 17th of first month, you have no more judgment. You have no more sickness. You have no more problem. You have no more poverty. Why? This conqueror Jesus dwells in you. You can change everything upside down. If you believe and if you have this day of 17th of first month, if you believe this resurrection of Jesus Christ dwells in your life, is with you, then you will live conqueror's life. You will live victorious life. You will live joyful, happiest life in this world. I hope you can remember this death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ started from the 14th of the first month Completion of the 17th of first month of Nisan, all these four days dwells in your heart. And keep this uh, all information and have faith in the Jesus Christ of our Lord, Savior.
so you can live blissful life. Lastly, let me read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17. Then he adds, Their sins and their lowest deeds I will remember no more. Through the death of Jesus Christ, through the cruc crucifixion of Jesus Christ, through the shedding of Jesus, God does not remember your sin anymore. So there is no other things for you to do for your sin. There is no more crime. There is no more asking forgiveness. There is no more trying to get the remission of sin. Verse 18, now where there is remission of deeds, there is no longer an offering for sin. Amen. Yes. Since Jesus completely finished all the sin for us, all the problem of our life, all the sickness of our disease, there is no more offering for sin, not only sin, but also any troubles for your life. Jesus became a perfect Savior and completion of all the life challenge. I hope you believe this message and keep this word in your heart so that you can live a victorious life starting from today. Thank you for listening.